Yo, what's going on guys? It's your buddy Double D and today we're going to be talking about the absolute best group composition that me and my friends found and the strategy that we use to very easily clear and farm the incursion on hard mode. Now we have not finished it on challenging mode because challenging mode but when we do we will post an update for that but this is what we use to farm some gear over and over again for my friends and i'm going to share that with you right now so jumping right into it three out of four members are going to spec exactly the same as far as your skills and talents go your skills are going to be po uh, excuse me pulse and first aid i can talk okay we're gonna do pulse and first aid here all right pulse is gonna be running tactical scanner for that boost in dps and first aid is gonna be running the mod overdose this device heals target more efficiently and may even extend the target health beyond its normal rating meaning overshield which is helpful as far as our talents go, we're going to be running triage, heal an ally with a skill to reduce skill cooldowns by 15%. And then obviously critical save, you guys know what that does, and combat medic. And then I have my one is none. By the way, PSA, one and none is currently bugged right now. So if it procs on your last bullet, it's going to glitch your gun and it won't let you shoot. It'll basically jam. So it won't let you shoot. It won't let you reload. All you have to do is switch weapons real quick and then you can fix that problem really easily. So the reason that we're going to run these talents, obviously, you know, combat medic is a, is a, is a defensive debuff, uh, critical save, just more healing. Uh, excuse me, I got those mixed up. Combat medic is just a blanket 40% extra healing. Uh, critical save is going to increase your damage resistance by 40% when used in the last health segment. One is none. You guys know headshots have a 50% chance of not consuming the bullet, which basically just extends your magazine beyond its normal size. But this is going to be the big one right here, triage. Uh, heal an ally with a skill to reduce skill cooldowns by 15%. And that's going to be huge because what you and your friends are going to be doing is when you jump into the uh, incursion, and you jump down and you first see the APC, you guys are going to book it for those two restocks that are underground in that little hallway. And the reason that you want to do that is because that is the safest place on the map. The only thing you really have to worry about then are going to be the shotgunners and the little drones. And those are going to take priorities. You absolutely need to kill any drones that you see before anything else and you need to kill all the shotgun rushers because they will just run in and ruin your day so that's what we're going to really be using the pulse for you can stack the pulse however i recommend cycling the pulse just so that you always have one up and you don't get surprised because if you are not geared the shotgun guys will run in and just completely squad wipe you before you know what's going on the way that we uh dealt with the shotgunners when we were carrying some friends that were a little less geared is that we just used our signature skill um, survivor link when they jumped in one at a time and between you know by the time that one of them ran out uh, we had cleaned up everything so that gave our team a little bit of boost in our survivability when we needed it now other than that it's pretty simple all you're gonna do is you're gonna stay down there you're gonna clear the waves you can use um, the stairs to kind of pop up I do not recommend using the stairs that directly face the APC because the turrets will hit you and stun lock you and you'll take a lot of damage and it's just really irritating so use the back stairs to kill things. You do need to watch out for snipers when they spawn, um, but that is, you know, that is just every couple of waves. Now that you know what the skills are and the talents are, let's go ahead and look at the uh, stats that you'll need to be running that I recommend and your gear set. Now if you notice here, I am not actually running my high high DPS build. I have a build where I can reach over 200,000 DPS, but it puts my skill power at about 10,000 to 11,000 and my health down to about 75,000. I have chosen to replace a lot of my DPS and change it over to my health and skill power. So you see now I'm running 165,000 DPS, 92.5 thousand health, and 19.5 thousand skill power. And that's gonna help with those heals, um, the scan pulse damage bonuses, and it's gonna help me stay alive. That's gonna be huge. It doesn't matter how much damage you do, glass cannons are not gonna really do very well 
in this incursion, in my opinion. If you guys manage, then great. Carry on the way that you know how, but this is my recommendation for you. As far as weapon setups, I'm using my MP5 and my first wave M1A. I do recommend using some kind of a marksman rifle just because those pesky little snipers come out and they get on the walkway. And if you've got one or two people that have some decent skill power and uh, DPS and a marksman rifle, they can take them down pretty quickly. Just be mindful that they do have tenebrae and they will blind you when you stare at them for too long, so please don't. Um, that being said, getting into the strategy of things, basically what you're going to want to do is, like I said, make a beeline for that uh, little underground tunnel there, and you're going to stack up, and you're all going to want to clump together. Now, I know that seems counterintuitive because you're like, but... But what about the explosions and the grenades and stuff like that? Yeah, that's a thing, but it's not going to be such a big thing when you're underground. You're going to be safe from about 90% of the explosions and the blasts. About the only thing that's really going to cause you trouble down there is that APC explosion. So be paying attention to that and do not stand in it because it does one-shot you. Now, with that being said, everybody's going to stand close together so you can just continually pop your first aid heal. And when you're all healing each other to overheal and the triage is kicking in, your heal cooldown is pretty much going to always be up. You're usually going to be at full health, probably with an overshield more often than not. So it just increases the group survivability. All we would do is we would stay down there until the guy with the explosives comes out. We run out, kill the guy with the explosives. Two go right, two go left. You know that because you've got to turn off those turrets. Now my recommendation is that you have someone count down. And as soon as they get to two... Don't wait for them to say that the turrets are down. As soon as they get to about two, or as they say three, the guy with the explosive wants to go ahead and start running out. So you'll run out. You might get hit like once, but whatever. They're going to turn off the turrets. You're going to plant the explosives. Now, guys on the um, turret controls, don't run away because they will respawn very quickly, and you're just going to want to turn them right back off. You don't want your buddy getting stun locked out there in the middle of nowhere. And you're basically going to rinse and repeat that until the very last. Uh, wave. Now, once we got to the last wave, it's very difficult to clear everything and kill the guy and get out there before stuff starts respawning. It is not on a death respawn. It is on a timed respawn, meaning uh, the next wave will not come when you kill the last guy. The next wave just comes regardless. So it's a DPS check, and if you can't keep up, you're going to find yourself in a bad situation. So what we did was we saved all of our survivor links until the end, we cycled them. So basically what would happen is we would see, we would find where the guy is. We would put out our scan pulse. All of us would pop our consumables like explosive bullets or incendiary rounds, whatever it was we were going to do. Then we would pop survivor link, run out there as a group, burn him down really quick, run, pop the second survivor link, turn off the turrets, uh, place the explosive, run out, pop the last survivor link, and run around in circles like a crazy person while the APC was in its death throes. Now here is a fun little tip for you guys, and this happened to us. Um, some of the guys in my group made a mistake. It, that happens. People make mistakes. They made mistakes. Mistakes were made. And um, everyone died while I was planting the explosives. Uh, so I couldn't, and everyone died in a place where I could not revive anybody. So as soon as I got around the corner, the explosives went off and the APC started exploding and then somebody killed me. But instead of holding circle to just give up and going, well, I guess it was a wipe, I crawled around until the APC actually died. And I did die too, but then when we respawned in, it didn't give us the credit for the weekly, but our loot from the boss was right there in front of the APC. So we were able to to just run out and grab it and die and say whatever we're not doing that again right now we'll do it later so if you guys find yourself in a situation where you think you're going to die but the apc is dying as well make sure that you don't just give up try and survive because your loot will be there when you respawn so let's do a quick overview right now you're going to want to run oh i'm sorry i completely forgot about the last guy that's my bad the last guy is going to be running almost the exact same thing but instead of first aid he is going to run first aid station and he's going to want the respawn stock um, ammo cache. So basically when you guys are down at the stairs, this guy is going to drop the supply, uh, support station right on the stairs where you guys are standing, providing extra healing over time. I'm sorry, I almost wrapped it up and did an overview without covering that. Um, so yeah, so that's what the last guy is going to run. So now let's do the overview. Uh, three out of four people are going to be running Pulse with Tactical Scanner. 
and first aid with overdose. The, uh, all, everybody in the group is going to run Survivor Link, and the last guy is going to be running Pulse with Tactical Scanner and Support Station with Ammo Cache. As far as talents go, everyone kind of wants to stick to Triage, uh, Combat Medic, Critical Save, and one is none is just too good to give up. So there you go. As far as weapon and stat choices, make sure that you are not a glass cannon. Make sure that you can survive. You want a decent amount of skill power so that you can heal your teammates and stay alive and do DPS. I recommend a close range weapon such as a submachine gun and a long range weapon for the snipers that appear out on the side, such as a marksman rifle. If you're comfortable with an assault rifle, go for it. It, but I'm just not so I used the first wave M1A as far as the strategy goes as soon as you drop down book it to that little underground tunnel and you guys are going to live there until the last round make sure that you are timing your turret deactivations with the guy that's running out so he doesn't get caught out in the middle with his pants down and in the last last wave find the guy with the explosives pop all your cooldowns pop survivor link run out forget about everybody else don't worry about them just make sure that the turrets uh excuse me just make sure that the little drones are dead before you go out once that happens pop survivor link pop your cooldowns run out bum rush the guy kill him make sure you know who's grabbing the explosives pop the next survivor link run plant them and collect your loot Anyways, guys, I hope you found this video informative and that you guys are enjoying 1.1 as much as I am. I will catch you guys in the next video. Double D out.